side has held England to a 12-12 draw at Twickenham a month ago. Keith Robertson is the most capped player afield, his 43rd today. Another test in prospect for the young Scottish halfbacks. The onus for an improved line-out supply rests a good lot on those Anglos lock forwards, Chris Gray and Damien Cronin. And in that much-respected loose forward trio, who boast 58 caps among them, Finlay Calder is the captain for the third time. Ireland show three changes from the 3-16 defeat by England. Keith Crossan is back for his 28th appearance. Neil Francis provides additional bulk and Dennis McBride extra pace to the pack. Those experienced backs with 34 international tries to their credit will want more line-out ball. And intent on seeing that they get it is the captain for the sixth time, Philip Matthews. Craig Chalmers gets the game going. And it went straight out. And so uh, that'll uh, let the young fellas see that the wind is quite strong. And there we hope, hopefully not, a serious injury to uh, Noel Mannion, the Irish number eight, and I think John Jeffrey, the Scottish flank forward. Now, of course, in following up after the kick, they probably bashed into each other. It, just an accidental clash of heads. Well, you can hear the cheers of relief. And all Scots will be hoping that uh, that won't affect John Jeffrey's play. The Kelso Farmer gets into the scrummage. A hem hounded by Armstrong. The pickup by Chalmers. Out to White. Back inside to Jeffrey. And the first error by the Irish as the Scots forwards pile on. Armstrong, Chalmers, very high. It's a lovely Gary Owen. It's going to drop just short of the Irish line. Dunley had to play it, and he did extremely well. A lovely bit of fullback play by the Irish fullback right at the start. Throwing to the tail. Cronin got pushed out of the way. Irish skipper Matthews was going clear with it, but uh, there was, uh, looked as if it was an offside decision going round on the wrong side before the ball was played. Michael Kiernan. And so Michael Kiernan does all the uh, touchline punting. There he is. Uh, his 37th international today and the key goal kicker for Ireland. Derry quite made the initial charge, and now it's Armstrong, again, out to Derry quite quite tremendous force, two great runs by the uh, Gala, breakaway forward, Gary Armstrong round quickly, Kiernan is half knocked over again by Derry quite what a start he's made, and so Derry quite number eight there, who's one of the most versatile forwards in the Scottish game, has played in all the back five positions for his club, for the south of Scotland, and for Scotland, making a great bid here for the Lions side. Armstrong, Finlay Calder, the feed on again to White. And Ireland offside, and a great chance for the Scots. I'm quite surprised here, Bill, because I thought Ireland might hold sway in the tight scrums in Scotland, uh, hold the edge in the line-out, but it seems to be that Scotland are very much on top in the tight scrum. And there, a sad sight, John Jeffrey coming off. And there, Dr. Clark Sharp, the Scots uh, medical officer, looking after him. Peter Dodge, then. Ken Milne holding the ball for him. Dodge strokes it nicely. It's through, and that uh, lovely casual effort by Peter Dodd put Scotland into the lead. 3-0, they played about 12 minutes of the first half. Scottish flags aloft, the youngsters cheering, Scotland ahead. We believe that John Jeffrey has had a bang on the head. And right enough, Michael Kiernan forcing the Scots to drop out. There's the big lad down in the tunnel, they're trying to... Uh, just check up that it isn't a concussive thing. Chalmers gets the game going again, and Ireland will want to exploit this one-man advantage. 
There's Noel Mannion who scored that great 80 metres try, remember, against the Welshman. And so John Jeffrey seems to have had clearance because he's ready to come back on again. Les Beard there, motioning to the referee. Listen to the cheer. He has been in such wonderful form that the crowd immediately reacted to his return. Who again goes Calder. Gary Armstrong thinking of going up the narrow side. Calder feeds out. Chalmers. Again, a huge Gary Owen. It's miles up in the air. Dunley beaten to it. Calder takes on. Calder charging over the 22. Now it's Armstrong. There's a great chance here. Lenin out to Dodge. Dodge. Robertson. Robertson feeds on to Gray. Gray, the lock forward going. Five, six metres short. The pick up by Armstrong. Out to Chalmers. Out to Scott Hastings. David Soul charges. Great Irish defence here, but still a chance. Armstrong out. It's a try for Kukolo. Chalmers was the late man. Kukolo the try scorer. Scotland, seven points in the lead, 15 minutes gone. And that was a superb try. Forwards and backs in it, just watch this. There's the Armstrong feed. It went out to Scott Hastings. He pulled in more men. David Soule took a couple of men out. Michael Kiernan, one of them. And then Craig Charmers was the late man to Tukolo, and he was home and dry. Ivan Tukolo's sixth try for Scotland. A great feed out there. Craig Chalmers did wonderfully well. It's brought back in, and of course, David Soule is another back row forward in these situations. He goes in, Finlay Calder's in there, and a wonderful feed on from Craig Chalmers to Ivan Tukolo, who just did the finishing job as he's paid to do. And young Chalmers here playing like a veteran rather than a lad who's uh, just in his third international. Yes, he's got the feel of it now. He's got an idea of the win. Taken, however, by the big fellow Francis. Neil Francis, who's been brought into the Irish side. Uh, we'll get a bit closer look at him later on. He's a huge fellow, listed as six feet six, but he looks bigger than that. Armstrong, Chalmers, and there again the youngster on the weaker left foot and yet putting in a lovely kick. Scotland uh, have been ringing the changes in their line out. Ireland have stuck very much to the conventional line. Dean, all the way out there to Brendan Mullen. He sliced that a bit. Keith Robertson waits. Robertson, tackled by Crossan. The pick up by Dodds. But they're a perfect example of what a useful player Keith Robertson is in conjunction with his fullback, doing the kind of fullback duties. Great jump. There's Neil Francis showing his six feet six inches there. And that's what good line out ball can do for you. Wee bit clumsy coming back. One or two uh, big feet, but a Hearn's little chip kick has found a very useful touch for Ireland. And Fergus Ahern there, who's come into the Irish side this season, his seventh international now. Armstrong dives and touches down. Scrum five. Gary Armstrong, who's a delightfully laid-back character. Nothing upsets him. He takes everything in his stride. Good heel by Steve Smith. The channel's all right. Ahern, Dean. Dean will go straight, taken by Mullen. Mullen is through. A great try. A magnificent try by Brendan Mullen. And that takes him up to 12 tries for Ireland. And he's within two of the record. It was a lovely move, beautiful ball, first of all. Dean, who straightens well first, and then the switch play with Mullen. He really should have been knocked down. Finley Calder got him low, but he stretched far enough, and the line is in goal. A good try. So, Michael Kiernan to cut the deficit to just one point. Oh, he's pulled it in beautifully. Lovely kick. 256 points for Michael Kiernan, seven points to six, and they've played 21 minutes of the first half. 
think that Craig Chambers here was pulled out a little bit following his man there, and that allowed the space to be created for uh, Mullen to come right in. Through goes Cronin. Looked a bit uh, quick too. However, narrow side. David Soul. Soul in great form. On to Jeffrey. Jeffrey with the famous Kelso handoff. Ducalo on to David Soul again. Great stuff by the Scottish forward. Now it's Armstrong. Along the line to Lenin. This is Scott Hastings. Peter Dodge. Dodge half through. Dodge over the 22. He's got Jeffrey inside him. Great cover tackle there by Crossan. Down goes Dunley. 10 metres out from the Irish line. Ken Milne is there. And it's a penalty to the Scots for killing it. But what a marvellous run that was by the Scottish backs and Dodd. They're going for the short one. Burnell. Gary Armstrong out to Calder. Calder on to Scott Hastings. Chance there. Cronin. But the penalty had been given. And, and they're playing the old soldiers game here, Bill. They're just giving away penalties rather than tries. They're standing up very, very... Uh, much to the offside line. Scotland going for David Soul. Stopped by Steve Smith. Armstrong Burrows out to John Jeffrey. Jeffrey is there. Jeffrey scores his ninth try for Scotland. He extends his Scottish record and look at the flags waving. No wonder. What a recovery from a bump on the head. And it, you felt it had to come. David Soule went first of all. He took the three or four defenders out. And then, of course, when the ball came back to Gary Armstrong, just watch this. Jeffrey had, what, four or five metres. He's six feet four, and he's got a good reach. Peter Dodge. It'll pull the ball away to the left-hand side. One would imagine. Watch, he'll give a wee bit. Uh, wipes his hands. There he is, a little twitter, and then... <coughs> Blanc. Oh, he's, he's done it beautifully. Oh. 13-6, they've played 27 minutes of the first half. Well, certainly, Bill, uh, this is a great try set up again by David Soule, who's playing out of his skin here. He took all the men away from the side. Geoffrey hung off. Lovely little feed from Armstrong. And uh, John Jeffrey may have double vision, but he knew which line he was putting the ball over. A jump by Francis. This is the huge fella, and what a difference he's making to the Irish line out. Pick up and drive by Steve Smith, tackled by Jeffrey. Now it's a Hearn. Misses out everybody to Dave Irwin. Erwin tackled by Chalmers and by White. Scott's forwards there so quickly. The feed on to Soul from Calder. Scott's going at a tremendous tempo here. Chalmers with a real chance here as Lenin gave. Scott Hastings. Scott Hastings tackled by Mullen. On to Lenin. Lenin beautifully out to Chalmers. Chalmers to Ducolo. Ducolo is home. His second try. This is magnificent play by Scotland. The third try of the match. No wonder the crowd's delighted. Ivan Ducolo having the time of his life. Scotland 11 points in the lead. 29 minutes played in the first half and it was forwards and backs again David Soule helped by Finlay Calder and then there was an overlap here Chalmers, Lenin, Scott Hastings well tackled by Mullen into Lenin and then Chalmers and watch how Tupelo changed direction he came off his left foot and he was gone in a blur Dodge then yes, clean through his third successful kick of the match. And Scotland are leading 19 points to six. They've 10 minutes to go to the interval. Once again, Bill, a tremendous setup by the forwards here and nice sleight of hand by the backs. Scott Hastings did enough to open up the gap. Lane came through. Chalmers once again involved. And Tuchelo changed the angle just enough to let himself through the gap and wrong foot the Irish. Just inside Irish territory. Jimmy McCoy at the front, but Ireland are going to peel. But a bit of shoving through. Penalty to Ireland. 
Well, you would hear the gasp of astonishment round Murrayfield because that Michael Kiernan is going to have a shot for goal, and that's the halfway line. So, really, he's got a kick of about virtually 60 metres here. That's the distance of it. Kiernan then. He's given it a tremendous lick. He hasn't made it. He has. Oh, what a goal. It brings you in mind of Paul Thorburn's great kick against Scotland a few seasons ago at Cardiff. And the Irish support are thrilled and quite astonished. It was a magnificent kick. Just watch it again from behind the post. It seemed to go on and on. Clive Norling could hardly believe his eyes. Wait, went over, he said. See Kerry Fitzgerald telling the backs to stay on side. He's a great one for chattering as the game goes on. Dean. This is Erwin. Dean on the loop. Out to Mullen. Mullen is through. Oh, what a great chance this is. Try for Dunleer. Brilliant Irish try. That was magnificent play. Dunleer, the fullback, scores his first try for Ireland. And that'll give him a tremendous amount of confidence. Irish flags aloft because it was a superb look try. 19-13, they've about three minutes to go to half-time. And Ireland are back in the hunt. Watch how Dean went on the loop here. This is Erwin, he straightened, made the gap, and then Mullen broke the tackle, and he was through. There was a two-man overlap here. Dan Lee was one, but Keith Trussen was outside him. A great move, and a superb try. Michael Kiernan. Yes, come and collected, and... Uh, well, as I say, Ireland very much back in the hunt. 19 points to 15. Two minutes to go to half-time. 34 points in the first half. Craig Chalmers. I like the way Chalmers comes forward to take the ball, Bill. He's a very confident young man. Francis on the jump. Ireland trying to roll it away, now it's a Hearn. Dean. Yes, the wind whipped it back. And actually it's Keith Robertson who gets the touchdown. But it's great to have a fellow of this uh, lad's experience and skill levels as a kind of auxiliary fullback. A Hearn, ducking away. Good bit of play by the Irish scrum half. Back inside to Matthews. Now it's a Hearn again. Dean, there is an overlap here. Erwin to Mullen. To Dunlee. This is Crossan. Crossan. Outside to Mullen. Mullen's second try of the match. No wonder the former Oxford University student and graduate is cheering. And no wonder those Irish supporters are cheering. It's 1919 and we've played about three and a half minutes into... The injury time at the break. It was another lovely try. Erwin got it first. Then Mullen. Now watch how Mullen looked here as Dunley fed Trussen. Peter Dodds shaded Trussen and made a lovely tackle. But he got the ball out of the tackle. Stepped inside Gary Armstrong. Mullen the scorer. Another great try. Kiernan then, whose uncle, the great Tom Kiernan, president of Irish Rugby Union, is sitting down below us here. Watching how the nephew gets on, and he's getting on pretty well. Another superb kick by Kiernan. Nine points for him. Ireland in the lead, 21 points to 19. The whistle has gone for half-time. And that has been a remarkable half. So, six tries in that first half, three tries each. When did that last happen in an international, I wonder? All set for the second 40 minutes. Michael Kiernan gets it going. Cronin. Gary Armstrong to Craig Chalmers. That's a huge kick. Crossan judged it nicely. Notice what a slippery little fellow is. He comes off his right foot very well. Finley Calder didn't get it, but David Soule did. But it may not have been quite straight. Uh, the referee, I think, has to give a little bit of latitude for throwing into the line-out on such a windy day as this. 
that Kerry Fitzgerald keeping a good grasp on things, but the Scots almost seem to have won one. They've taken another against the head. White, Armstrong, Chalmers, Scott Hastings. This is Tuchelo inside his man. Tuchelo's gone. Tuchelo over the 22. Little bit of a high tackle there. Armstrong feeds onto White, onto Gray. Gray onto Cronin. Four metres short of the Irish line. A searing run by Ivan Tuchelo. The Scots trying to roll round the ball, but they were frustrated. Ireland got back there in numbers, but what a magnificent run by Tuchelo. A typical effort by him, off his left foot and then blinding acceleration, and away he went, and he almost made it by himself. Ken Milne, good throw, but Mannion did well. Hadn't caught by Calder. Lovely ball for the Scots. Armstrong. Armstrong snipes away. Half caught. Gray couldn't hold it. Ireland offside. Penalty to the Scots. So let's just have a look here. This is where the offside decision was. As Gary Armstrong bored away. And well, there were one or two Irishmen, one on one side and on the other as well. Peter Dodge and oh it was a beautiful stroke he hit it absolutely perfectly just like a lovely little wet shot 22-21 Scotland lead five minutes of the second half gone Michael Kiernan hung that one up well Gray waits they drive again by the Scots forwards Armstrong Chalmers and Scotland certainly using the wind effectively. And it bounced in. Oh, well, it didn't. It bounced up. And then Lee cleared. But for a moment from the crowd reaction that it had gone into touch. Then Lee there having a very sound game. He's a brave little fullback. Well, that looked at uh, Donald Anahan looked to me to be offside there. Of course, the idea is to try and get through like that onto loose ball, and sometimes you have to breach the offside line. Would you believe it? Three penalty goals and two conversions for Peter Dodds, and Scotland are four points in the lead. And a Hearn clears. Hasn't found touch. Robertson. That was almost a pickup and a breakout for the Irish as Keith Robertson had slipped through his hands. There's a Hearn and Crossan both up there. Ireland trying to get a 4 what played 4 1 2 result to the season. Calder goes. Derek White drives. The pickup by Gray, storming form, taken on by Armstrong, the feed on to Cronin, Cronin is gone, and Cronin has scored! His first try for Scotland, and it caps a magnificent display by him today. The flags waving there, 29-21 Scotland lead, they have about 13 minutes of the game to go, and it was the support work that Ian McLaughlin spoke about earlier that told, Gray the lock forward going first, Armstrong taking people out and then Cronin suddenly found himself in the middle of the desert and he was away. What a moment for a lock forward. Little routine again. Dodge strokes it. Well, he can't miss today. Three conversions, three penalty goals, ten points in it and they've about eleven and a half minutes of the match to go. Even the skeletons pleased. This again is a, a great drive initiated by Chris Gray. Chalmers there once, uh, Armstrong once again in, and I don't think that Damien Cronin could believe his luck there when he just accelerated through the hole. It's very unfair, you know, Bill, to see all these locks running about the field. A hand to Matthews. Matthews, knocked down by Jeffrey, but a lovely layback. A hand to Dean. Dean meant it to go to Mullen. Crossan. Crossan cutting back, gets past Jammers' tackle. Good bit of running by the little fella, gets help from his forwards. Ahern. Crossan once more. He is really running well. 
very measly little fella, but Cronin is in there. Picked up by Hastings, out to Tukolo. Tukolo has one man to beat. A great tackle by Dunleer. Back goes Kiernan. Now it's Dean. And what a chance. There was an overlap of two there. Here it was. There was an overlap of two outside him, but what a superb tackle by Dunleer. Full marks to him. Ideal position here for a drop goal. Craig Chalmers is right behind the scrummage. White, Armstrong, Chalmers, Scott Hastings. Hastings out to Dodge. Dodge, half to do on to Hastings. Tukola going. Tukola for the hat trick. He's there. The crowd on its feet. That surely is the try that ties it up for Scotland. And it was beautifully what Scott Hastings on the scissors. Peter Dodge came in. Little juggle was all right. Hastings again missed it, but Tukolo was ready. And that lovely swerve of his left foot beat Dunley. Another great try. Peter Dodge. Six goals so far. That looks like number seven. It's squeezed in and that's one of the finest displays of goal kicking ever the whistle goes for the end of the match and Scotland have won a convincing victory by 37 points to 21 in an amazing game that has produced eight scintillating tries